All right, I'm sitting here with, how, what do you go by? Sandy or? Sparkle. Sparkles, that's what you want to, okay. So how you doing? I'm all right. Do you want to give me a little history about, you know, where you're from, how old you are, stuff like that? Um, I grew up in Kensington near Somerset Station. Okay. Um, in the village. I'm so 34 local. years old. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 34. Um, how old were you when you st started using like the harder, harder stuff? Um, I was 31 going on 32. 31. Oh, so you started later, a little later on. Yeah, I only just turned 34. Oh, okay. 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 And what's your, your drug of choice? Um, I like uppers. Uppers, okay. Like crack. Okay. Now, are, have you noticed, do you do, you do the Powder. fentanyl? Do you do the fentanyl still too? Yeah, but I'm trying to cut down and hopefully eventually wean myself off completely. Okay. Like, I can't stand dupe. I can't, I don't even know why people call it a high. Like, I like uppers, they lift you up high, yeah. you know, like downers, they put you down. Mm -hmm. So it's more of like a low. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, have you noticed that the hard has been cut with the fatty, fatty around here a lot? Are you running yeah, into that? Yeah, there's been points where I've gotten a hard that has like made me go completely unconscious. Wow, that's so dangerous. And like man. my friends that don't do dope are like getting sick now. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I just uh, a girl I know from down here. She just passed away from just smoking hard. She, you know, she overdosed from it, which is wild from having too much fentanyl in it. That's sad. Yeah. Um. So uh, do you do you deal with sores? Um, no, the reason not, I ask is not like, currently, but I have had them in the past. Okay. I feel like, um, like they haven't been it, an issue or caused any ongoing issues for me because okay. I was like really on top of like maintenance and self care. Okay. Um, it just seems hygiene. like, like almost like I'd say 80, 75 to 80% like, of the people. I have, have a scar on my shoulder right okay. here. All right. Um, okay. and like, that wasn't a sore? That was my, it wasn't even just an abscess. My whole shoulder was an abscess. Like, like I couldn't head. lift my arm. Wow. And I had to actually have it taken care of surgically. And I've noticed like a lot of people who will get like even a surgical wound from that mm. stuff, the sore will end up getting really gnarly and yeah. infected and they'll have yeah. flies eating at it. And I didn't have any of those issues. That's like, good. Um, I kept it really clean. It never smelled bad. Uh. And it healed up really nicely. Okay, that's good. It's just that, man, I, almost everyone I talk to down here has a sore almost. It's, it gets yeah. hard with they want to go to go into a program. There's only two rehabs that will take you if you have a sore like, right now. I, I feel like every time I, I meet somebody who has like a really nasty sore, they've always got it like uncovered or in like filthy bandages. Like, you know, it's one thing to be to be out here in this situation, and it's another thing to like just not give a fuck and not bother to like care for yourself you know no it does People seem like that yeah it's, it's sad like yeah and i understand like depression plays a role in self-care absolutely and it, it's depressing out here but you can't give up on yourself yeah. like that uh, the, I, it's really important what you just said how depression plays a role i remember the last year i was out here i think i showered twice in that whole year um just that depressed you know so yeah. I, I get that what you're saying you know and it's hard to get up and take care of yourself when you don't want to live and, you know, stuff you right, and like that depressed. I mean, I go through it too. Like, I got hit by a truck and my leg is broken in That's four places. That's the next places. thing I was just going to ask you. I have, like, this ridiculous cast. And, like, my life sucks. Wow. You know, my life sucks. You said it goes from your foot all the way up to your butt, huh? Yeah, Pretty like, much. it starts right here at the wow. tip of my toes. And it goes, like, all the way up. And, um, like... Man. And it sucks. So but you got hit by a, a truck. Like I had to get up and teach myself to walk because nothing is going to keep me down. Nothing. I don't care how hard it is. Now, I don't care how painful it is. How long ago did that happen? August third. Okay. I, I have to go. I have to go back soon um, and try and get the cast removed. The cast has actually only been on for about four weeks. It's supposed to be on for like six. Okay. Because um, I had an external fixator on at first. I left the hospital with the external fixator on. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. It's when um, they put, they had put a rod through my heel oh, and a rod okay. through my kneecap, and the rod on the side had bars connecting together 
Oh, okay. That's going up. It was like a bar and then a bolt and then another bar. Wow. And then on this side, a bar and a bolt and another bar. And the top of this bar connected to the rod sticking out of the kneecap and the bottoms of that, those bars connected to the rod sticking out of the heel. Wow. And it was painful and it was gnarly and because I was out here on the streets of Kensington instead of the hospital where I was supposed to be, yeah. the wound got badly infected and turned into a bone infection. Oh, wow. And I left again. Wow. The AMA again in the hospital? Okay. And I came home and I told everybody that I got discharged because I didn't have the heart to tell them that. Yeah. I didn't feel like any of them cared about me, so I didn't care about me either. Yeah. <sighs> so how long ago was that when you had this last AMA? How when, um, was that when in August or is that a little more recent? It was, it was like maybe two, three weeks ago. Two, three weeks ago, okay. Uh, it was shortly after I got the cast put on actually, so closer to like four weeks ago maybe. Okay. But um, I was really lonely and depressed and it's crazy because like people think that when an addict AMA is from the hospital it's because they want drugs. And like I did my best to tell myself that, that it was a bit of drugs. Like oh, I just wanted to smoke a crack rock. But, like, Honestly, it wasn't. It was. I wasn't. I wasn't going through withdrawal or anything. Like, if I was going through any kind of withdrawal, it was like withdrawal from people. Like, I wanted someone to visit me so bad. So like, you're just lonely. I was yeah. so lonely. Yeah, I get that. And I couldn't. I couldn't shake it. I couldn't stop missing people. Yeah. No, I completely understand that, man. Especially. You know, you're already. Obviously, you know, depressed down here, you and, know. Like, this is one of the hardest things I've ever been through in my life. And it's my own fucking fault, you know. I wasn't paying attention. People keep asking, oh, well, were you on dope? Did you tranquil walk in front of traffic? Like, no, it was nothing like that. It was August 3rd. It was morning time. It was hot as hell. I was hanging out with this guy all night. We've been smoking crack, so I was actually pretty alert. And, um... He went to the gas station and he'd already treated me so much without trying to lay a hand on me or without asking for anything that when he asked me if I wanted a soda or something, it like almost made me feel bad, like the thought of him like spending any more money on me than he already had. Um, so I felt uncomfortable saying yes to anything. Um, and so when he offered me a drink, I turned it down. <laughs> And I was standing there waiting for him to come back, and I was sweating my ass off. And um, and I was like, you know what? I got two dollars in my pocket, and I should just go over it and buy myself a water ice or something. Even if I don't want to drink, I should still get something cold because it's too hot. And I really love water ice, and so the thought of it made me happy. And I walked my happy ass out into the middle of the street and got nailed by a truck that I didn't see coming. Damn. And. I sure as hell felt it. Like, How long were you in the hospital after it happened? Was it a while or? I was unconscious for six days. Oh wow, we got hit that hard then, huh? Man. The, the, truck, the truck hit me and my leg broke in four places. Wow. And um, I feel like if I was a bigger person, I probably wouldn't even be here right now. Like I probably would have like splat it into the street like a pancake or maybe like burst apart and went in separate directions. Like a lot of, like I've heard a lot of other people who've been hit by vehicles have. Like wow. it was, it was a really strong impact. Oh, but oh, sorry, it, go ahead. So, don't make sure my face. Is it's ahead. not. It's not. I'm not playing. All right. Because I'm such like a small person, um, I feel like that's actually like one of the things that saved me. I'm little. I flew backwards. You yeah. Know? And my head hit the concrete, and I was uncon unconscious for six days. Yeah. Wow. And then you AMA'd it, like kind of kind of came to your senses, got a little better, and then... Yeah, I, I was there for a few days first, and then, like, I was hoping that, like, maybe my aunt would call me and let me talk to my kids. I mean, yeah. I just died, like, and I was, like, technically sober in the hospital and stuff, you know? And then um, when that started to feel hopeless and, like, nobody was going to reach out to me, I left. And what's sad is that I found out that after I left, they actually did reach out thinking that I was still there. Damn, really? I was already gone. Man, that sucks. So, uh, do you have any sober support if you choose to, um, wait, hold on, I'm, all right, I'm gonna start this. 
All right. So do you have sober support you can use if you choose to? Yes. When you get sober? You do? Okay. That's important. Um, the thing is, like, some, some of the sober support I have has been completely, like, the opposite of supportive now. And so it's like I could choose to use those supports if I wanted to, but, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to because the way you treat me at my worst is it definitely is going to impact whether or not I want to be near you when I'm at my best. Yeah. And no, I, it was hard for me to, you know, with, with that same thing. To there there are certain people who, when I get better and they want to be around me, I will never, ever be able to forgive or see the same way again because, like, I haven't always been an addict, you know. I had a nervous breakdown and I needed... I need the help, I need the love, I need the support. And what I didn't need was people deciding that because my behavior had changed or my habits had changed and had been less than what everybody expected from me or different than what everybody expected from me. And I was failing to meet their expectations that they needed to punish me for it. I was already punishing myself. I was already failing to meet my own expectations. Yeah. I didn't need that from anybody else. No, I get it. I need, I need people in my life who aren't going to be as hard on me as I am. Because I'm hard enough on myself. Yeah. I get it, man. It's, it's, it's tough. There's not anybody out there who can hurt or punish me more than I've hurt or punished myself. And anytime, it seems like anytime anyone tries to try, I come down on myself 10 times harder. Yeah. Yeah. Just to prove a point, like. No, I get it. Is this gonna be your first winter homeless or did you? No. You went through the last one? I somehow survived last winter. Mm -hmm. Well, you weren't in the wheelchair though last winter, so. No. <laughs> Who's that? I can't see. Oh shit, what up Rob? <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that was one of the, uh, sorry, that's one of the uh, sober house guys I lived with up in Bucks County when I got sober. So, um, do you have any desire to get off the streets right now? I mean, I know no one wants I, to be here, I but do. do you, are you planning or want to go into a program, rehab, anything like that? Um, I do want to try. Okay. Do you know where to reach out to? Like, if and when you're ready? Not, not entirely. Mm. Like, I have some ideas, but... Like, you, you know the rock ministries? Um, yeah. Prevention Point, you know, those places. The last stop. The last stop, yeah. You just gotta... Or, or then you go to any of the subway station. Um, any SEPTA station. You see those people with the yellow? They will have a bed for you that night if you ask them. You just gotta want to do it, you know? It's it took me, once I decided I wanted to get sober, it took me three years to get off the streets. Once I was like, I had enough. So, you know, time moves, so, you know, it's, you'd be sitting here a long time saying you want to go, go to rehab. You just, you know, at some point you got to decide you want to do it and then just go, you know. All right, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, can we do follow-ups in the future if I see you, stuff like that? Absolutely. I'd like to, you know, help you get off the streets if, if possible, if that's something you'd want to do. It's definitely something I'd want to do. Like, I mean, I don't, I, I've never felt like being an addict should be reason enough for a parent to not be able to see or speak to their children anymore. The truth of the matter is being homeless makes it so that if I go to court to even try and fight for visits, where the fuck am I going to visit them at? Yeah. You know? I mean, maybe the courthouse for a little bit, but... Well, if you get clean, right? If you do this, there's a, it's right up near where I live. I just helped a girl get into the program. It's called Liberté. It's an all-women's halfway house. And they help with housing and getting you back into your kids' lives and all that. There's programs, that, you know? You just got to bite the bullet and go into rehab, and then, you know, you go from there. But the girl Jess I helped, she's in, she just graduated from the program last week. She's in a recovery house now, doing good up in Bucks County. So hopefully, um, you know, you decide to 
get clean sometime soon because you deserve way more than what you're giving yourself right now. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for doing this. I think, I think everybody who loves me deserves way more than what I'm giving them too. Yeah. But you also, you deserve it for yourself, you know? You you're, seem like a good person. You deserve a lot more than what, what you're giving yourself right now. That's for sure. All right. Thanks again. Thank you.